Welcome back. You're still tuned into Trading R. And last couple of days, we saw those big moves on fertilizer names. Today, some of them have come in for some profit booking, uh, but the run has been really stellar. Uh, sources told CNBC TV 18 that the Fitment Committee has called for the proposal to cut GST on fertilizers to be rethought by the Standing Committee. Uh, to discuss this and what's working for the fertilizer space in general, Himanshu Binani, research analyst in Anand Rati Institutional, is joining us now to discuss more. Himanshu, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. You know, I just want to understand, is this possibility of a GST rate cut the only thing that's working for fertilizers or are there other triggers as well for the space overall? I know you don't cover all the stocks, but just in general, uh, what's working for the sector? Right. So, good morning and thank you for having me there on the show. So, first of all, when we actually look into the fertilizer segment, so we have like seen a very stellar sort of like run up into the stock prices for the last few days. So, however, we are of the view that this sort of like GST uh, re rate realignment basically and number one bringing the natural gas under the GST regime. So, this has been like going on for quite some time and whatever what I understand is that this in turn is like not likely to have a meaningful impact basically on the overall earnings profile of the companies. However, there has been like some talks in terms of like the DBT regime, which is likely to get revised. And if at all, the government comes up with a DBT 2.0, so which is currently into the pilot stages. So if that comes in, that in turn would result into a re-rating basically into the overall uh, space. Mm. So you're saying that uh, this news around po possible reduction in the GST rate from 5%, this is not... Uh, not particularly meaningful. And even if, uh, I mean, you're saying even if natural gas gets it, anyway, it's not being discussed in tomorrow's meeting, but you're saying even if natural gas gets into GST, uh, that will not have uh, much impact on the feedstock prices for fertilizer companies, Anand? Right. So basically, when you actually look into natural gas, and if at all, we consider that natural gas coming in under the GST regime. So one has to understand that natural gas is like largely used by the urea players. From natural gas, we get ammonia and from ammonia, we get urea. So in terms of like the natural gas, currently we are under that VAT regime. So however, if this, um, so which is like considered as a cost basically for the urea players. So, and one has to understand that the entire cost is like fully passed through. So if at all the natural gas is coming under the GST regime also, I do not foresee any sort of like impact on the PNL. So PNL should be like largely neutral for the urea companies. Secondly, if you look into the non-urea side, non-urea, they, they do not like extensively use the natural gas. However, the discussion of bringing like the GST from 5% to zero so that in turn would result that the mrps are likely to get decreased in the final market so which in turn would be like providing some sort of help to the farming community so one has to see that how things play out on that side thirdly when you actually look into the industrial segment side so each and every fertilizer or moreover the urea players are having an industrial chemical segment also where they have like excess ammonia which they have been like generating and the ammonia and the byproducts they are using that in the industrial segment so one has to see that how things play out on that side so that in turn would be like beneficial for few of the companies like the fertilizer chambal gsfc to name a few so we we would be like awaiting for a final print from the government before like uh jumping to any sort of like conclusions Okay, all right. Don't take that point. And you know, the stocks have been so excited ahead of the GST meets that that clarification is very important as well. You briefly mentioned DBT as well. You know, possibility of that coming in that would put uh, uh, money in the hands of the farmers directly and the companies will not be, you know, a part of that particular transaction. But there are already right. no subsidy issues with the companies, right? Do you think the working capital and the balance sheet, uh, they have become better in last couple of years and they're getting subsidy on time and that is not a problem for fertilizer companies right now? So currently, when you actually look into the subsidy receipts and the subsidy outstanding, that has been like phenomenal. So one one can see one of the like best balance sheets, basically, be it FI23 or FI24. So on the subsidy side, the subsidy disbursement from the government has been like very timely, number one. Secondly, in terms of the outstanding, that, that can, uh, uh, continues to remain at a very comfortable zone. 
thirdly the stocks of subsidy and the dvd 2.2 which necessarily means that the subsidy gets directly trans uh, credited to the consumer's account than that of the industry's account basically so what that means is that the working capital requirement could be less and to that extent the interest cost savings and the lower working capital that that would be the impact basically on the pnl as well as on the balance sheet side so that would be like taken as a positive and that would be something which the industry would be like uh, celebrating on and that would be uh, a structural change basically in the sector okay okay all right um other than that i also wanted to understand the nano urea opportunity because uh, there's been a lot of chatter around that as well we had coromandel international talking about that new nano urea plant is it something that would be earnings accretive for some of these names uh, uh, you have nfl as well which has announced it they have not of course commissioned it yet because the ground uh, demand has been lower than what was anticipated do you think that could be the additional kick up right so basically one has to understand or maybe like look at the nanotechnology this way that due to the uh, lower literacy rate basically in india so what what is happening is that the farmers are like not adapting to the newer technology number one so when you actually look into the nano urea side so which is like more of a push product than that of a pull product number one now secondly when you actually look into the other companies be it coromandel also now they have also entered into the nano technology and they have like recently launched the nano dap with somewhere around the 200 million capacity which is somewhere around the 500 uh, ml bottles so they they had started initially with the visac plant however they recently got an approval to manufacture this product in their katinada plant so as of now what we understand is that they have been like getting uh, good response from the farming community and this would be like the first uh, full year of operations for them so maybe like we we need to wait and watch how things pan out in this current season before like jumping any to any sort of like conclusions mm. uh you know just to go back to the point on uh, subsidy and policy I, in the february budget i was just checking the numbers uh the amount of subsidy was actually reduced uh total right. subsidy was 24420 which was lower than the last fiscal and then they it's nutrient based subsidy right i think they right. kept it for uh, phosphorus based fertilizers it wasn't available for potassium and a, you know, a bunch of others i think for uh, uh diammonium phosphate etc the, the subsidies were not the levels were not increased now we're running into the full fledged budget so uh, just tell us in terms of uh, the next triggers to watch beyond the sentimental impact of monsoon and the gst rate cut which as you explained is not really material uh, from a more material fundamental standpoint what are the next important triggers to watch out for for fertilizer companies given that we are uh, moving towards the budget now so from the current standpoint if you see so the recent rally has been like more of a pre budget rally and and this was like fueled by this uh, the the incremental uh, uh, expectation of the normal monsoons basically which in turn has like filled this valley so one has to understand that from the current standpoint if you see in terms of the valuations etc so the industry has been like growing at a low to mid single digit sort of cagr in terms of volumes over the last two decades and what i understand is that this sort of like run rate is likely to continue going forward as well secondly uh, in terms of the uh recent msp increase also so what we have seen is that they are the uh, when when we actually look into the prices of the mandi prices of the key crops as well as the msp so most of the crops are like trading well above the msp rates and going by the uh in uh, better farm farm economics outlook for normal monsoons and thirdly the subdued rm prices so what i understand is that from the current standpoint each and everything is like factored in and there would be like no incremental excitement we see from the current got it so i want to just very quickly i mean i take your point that the the rally has factored in everything but purely from an earnings uh, growth perspective margin improvement perspective because you said that uh, you know some of the raw material prices should be cooling off uh, so just from a you know pure earnings perspective which are the stocks that you would watch out for where may, we could get at least decent earnings so so from the current standpoint we continue to like sumitomo chemicals which is into the agrochemical space so we we continue to like sumitomo chemicals and upl in the agrochemical spec while we continue to prefer coromandel international in the fertilizer space so these are the structural plays and one one should like expects a stable sort of like earnings growth going forward also. 
Okay, all right, Himanshu. Thank you so much for joining us and making sense of what's happening in the fertilizer space. A lot of uh, sentiment uptick is what's been seen in the fertilizer stocks lately. But as he points out, that it could not, it would not make such a big difference in the earnings landscape. Time for a short.